In this movie, I'll take you through the new cross-section editor in Alias 2011. In previous versions, there were two cross-section tools. The Evaluate palette was used to create section data, and the Control panel created temporary visual sections. This Control panel tool has now been moved out to a floating control window, leaving more free space in the Control panel. And the functions of the old Evaluate cross-section have been replaced by the Promote tool in the new editor window. I can access the new cross-section editor from the Windows menu. And probably the first thing that you'll do is hotkey it, so that you can open and close it quickly whenever you need it. I've got a lot of old sections here and I can scroll through these in the floating window, leaving me more space in the control panel. Or I can resize it if I want to see all the sections. I can select sections as before using the control key or the shift key. Or I can just delete all the custom sections, leaving just the standard XYZ ones. I'll start by looking at this scan data. And I'll leave it unselected and I'll toggle the model off and have a look at the first major change, which is this new global setting. If I turn it on, any section I choose is automatically applied to any geometry on the screen and I don't have to select it. The second thing that I really like is that now the sections take on the colour of the layers. So if I make my layer reference or inactive, the sections respect the layer colours and stay visible. And for meshes, which are used with sections a lot, there's a new setting in the Preferences User Colours window that lets you set different colours for the mesh and the mesh sections, making it much easier to interpret the view when there's a lot of data on the screen. The next new feature is that I can now snap onto the visual sections. So here I'll snap the ends of a curve to this one. I can now also use locators on the visual sections directly without having to create section data first. So here I'll use the curve to curve deviation, which I can then use to refine the fit of the curve. So I might want to build curves from my mesh, or I could just start to lay on a surface patch. Here I'll use a square surface and specify the four corners. And whenever I create new geometry, the sections are automatically applied to it when I have this global setting on. And that will apply to any data that I import as well, or geometry that's on a layer that I make visible, for example. As I get my surfaces closer to the reference data, it becomes harder to see the different sections. But because the surface is on a layer, I can now choose a layer colour to show a really good contrast between the surface and the data. And as I create more geometry, I might want to be able to see only the sections without the mesh. So I can use the Promote option to create section data from the visual sections. And as before, I have the option of sorting and merging the sections. And in this case, I'll pick all of them. And if I turn off my visual sections, you can see that I've now got a layer for the X direction and a layer for the Y. And if I pick a single section, you can see that it's created a degree one section data, as I'd expect. Now I'll leave just the visual sections on the screen and move to a different stage. And you'll notice how the previous cross sections are now still visible in this stage, a feature that's been brought back in this version. Now I want to look at some NURB surfaces on this A pillar area. And I'll start by looking at this side window. I'll turn the global setting off and pick just the outer glass surface and apply the X section with the curvature. And as before, I can control the curvature plot from the control panel or by double clicking on the section to open the control window. And I can lock the curvature scale too as before. And as before, the tessellation tolerance controls the smoothness of the section. 
I'll make it a really coarse setting of 10 to make that easier to see. And now I'll put the global option back on and show you something really interesting about how the locators work with the tessellation. Here the tessellation is really approximate, but the deviation locator is accurate to the nerve surface underneath. And if I change the tessellation, then it doesn't affect the deviation measure, because it's always accurate. And this accuracy makes the sections really useful to work with. Now the visual sections are always temporary, so the locators disappear if I clear or change the sections. So if I wanted the measurements to be permanent, I'd need to promote the sections. And for nerves geometry, I can change this tolerance setting to get a more accurate fit. I'll just promote one section this time, and then I'll clear the visual sections. And if I check this curve against the surface, you can see that it's well within that tolerance that I asked for. But even though it's built from a NURB surface, the promoted curve is still degree 1 section data. Degree 3 sections used to be possible with the old Evaluate cross-section tool, but this is no longer available. So instead, I would use the improved Fit Curve tool to create a new curve with very good accuracy and a much better CV layout than the old cross-section curve. Now I'll turn on some reference data and I'll just turn off the anti-aliasing for now. And I want to show you the two new section types that have been added. The first is Axis Discrete, and this simply puts a section where I click. So here I can snap on this reference curve, or here I can just snap and drag along this surface edge. If I need a specific location, I can type that into the control window. And I can even just click anywhere in the view and get a locator and a sec section, which I can drag to anywhere I want. Back in the control window, I can delete that section if I want to. And if I leave the sections and do something else, I can always come back to it by double-clicking on the section to open the control window and make the locator live again. And what I really like is that I can toggle the shading off and the model off, and use it like a dynamic section, but with the benefit of the layer colours making everything easier to see. The second new section type is planar. Previously you would have to create a separate plane before asking for the section through it, but now you can create it as part of the section. Here I'll do a three-point plane through these reference curves. and you can see that it's cut right through the plane that I wanted. So now I can accurately compare my model to the reference data. I'll do another planar section, this time a geometry plane on the windscreen surface. And through the control window I can now set the number of planes, the spacing, and the direction of the repeats. So that's covered the new features and the new sections in the cross-section editor. Now I want to have a look at some examples of how these can be used. This rear seat is a really complex assembly with lots of components. I've got the metal frame, the foam and a redesigned fabric surface. And it's on models like this that I'm finding the new features really useful. Here I've used discrete sections through the seat centres. And if I modify, for example, the X-ray settings, and then I choose the anti-aliasing settings that I want, I get a really clear view of the relationship of the metal, the foam and the fabric in the different layer colours. Here I took a planar section on the seat back geometry to match the angle of the seat. And don't forget that I can make accurate measurements onto these, so it makes it really quick for me to take screen grabs to email queries or send information to the client or the design team.
I'll finish with a couple of other examples where I've found the new sections really useful. When I'm working on large yachts, there's always a reference grid that the boatyard works to, and I'm often asked for a specific section at a particular location. The Axis Discrete lets me type in the requested section, or if it's one of the standard increments, I can just click on the reference curve. And because I have a lot of geometry here, it's much quicker to just cut the sections I need, rather than cutting, for example, every X section. And with the layer colours and the X-ray settings, I get a really useful working view as well. On this phone model, you can see from the reflections that the front casing has a very subtle curve. But I was concerned that the curvature wasn't quite right in this corner. And so I used a planar section in a really simple way. I chose a world space plane and just clicked approximately where I wanted it. And then I rotated it roughly into the corner and then put the curvature plot on. By playing around with the position, I eventually spotted this tiny inflection right on the corner. And I use sections like this all the time when I'm doing accurate, subtle sculpting, as they really help me to read the detail of a surface. So the new floating cross-section editor has the global setting to apply sections to all the geometry and the promote tool to create section data when I need it. There's two new section types, axis discrete and planar. And the visual sections now respect the layer colours and geometry and locators can be snapped onto them.